Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are very happy to have um, Xiaoliang Qi from Stanford University to our joint uh, seminar between Postan and uh, Warsaw on his work of um, effective entropy and of quantum fields coupled, to, coupled with gravity. So Xiaoliang, please take it away. Okay, um, thanks Dongsheng for the introduction and thanks um, um, him and uh, Ignacio for the uh, invitation. Um, I'm very glad to discuss my um, work this year. Um, this is a work in um, collaboration with Xi Dong from Santa Barbara and uh, UC Santa Barbara and Zhou Shang, Zhou Shanan and uh, Min Yang from Stanford. Um, so, so the motivation is the uh, generalization of the quantum field theory entropy to gravitational systems. So basically, we are we are motivated by the fact that we our world has gravity. So if we think about the quantum field theory, we usually can we we can study um, entanglement properties such as um, entanglement entropy, um, and that's usually done in a fixed background. But we know in our real world, we don't have a real back, a fixed background. But it shouldn't matter too much, right? I mean, at least when the background fluctuation when the geometry fluctuation is not too strong. Um, there should be a natural generalization. So we're not worried about like the, the generalization to the very, very dramatically quantum uh, geometry case. Uh, but at least uh, when the geometry is weakly fluctuating, there should be uh, such a generalization. And once you do such a generalization, it should uh, um, contain these, uh, it should uh, um, correctly in include uh, um, these recent uh, uh, um, developments that include the results from the recent developments, which, which means the black hole entropy has a page curve, and because these things are taken care of by only looking at uh, um, saddle points, like um, semi-classical fluctuations of uh, um, semi -class in the semi-classical geometry uh, gravity theory, you can already see such um, non-perturbative uh, results. So we were trying to understand how that works uh, when you are studying a region with gravity. And then we, I will discuss the general setup and um, um, and then some examples. I will also hopefully, if I have time, I'll discuss the random tensor network model, which is designed to um, give some more intuition about this um, 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 about this uh, formula. Um, so the motivation is the page curve of the black hole. Um, so let me briefly um, overview. So the entropy, um, if I consider a, a, a black hole formed by pure state matter, I start with some gas, but the gas uh, together, all the molecules together is a, is a pure state. Then if we believe in unitarity of quantum mechanics, then the, it, if it, when they form a black hole and then the black hole evaporates, in the end we get these Hawking radiations, then Hawking radiation should still be in a pure state, just like the input state. So that means that the entropy of the black hole of the Hawking radiation must go up and then go down. And that's the page curve I draw on the, the right side. Um, there is a similar curve if you don't draw it as a function of time, but draw as a function of um, of the size of a subsystem, because the whole system is pure. So if you look at a subsystem, the entropy probably go up and then go down. And and the go, going up part is consistent with Hawking's calculation, because Hawking's calculation says the Hawking qubits, the radiation qubits are thermal, and Hawking shows what's their temperature. And so if you believe that calculation, then the entropy should be just linear uh, because every qubit is thermal. Um, but the fact that it, the entropy in the end comes down uh, back to zero is suggesting that um, they are not actually thermal. They, um, they just look thermal locally. And, and from the outside point of view, this is not very, I mean, from the modern point of view now, um, um, it's not like this phenomena is very mysterious. Like, like any thermalization of a pure state, uh, isolated system is like that. Like if you consider a spin chain or something like that, and then you start with the pure state, and then you evolve by a unitary Hamiltonian, and the Hamiltonian is, you evolve by a, a Hermitian a unitary time evolution with a, with some Hermitian Hamiltonian, and if the Hamiltonian is generic, it's not some very special solvable model, then you expect the system to thermalize in the end. And when you when the system thermalizes, if you look at each qubit, um, it looks thermal. But the whole system is not thermal, and you see that um, 
by calculating the entropy of subsystem, you get a very similar curve. So, so just having this curve is totally consistent with um, with, with quantum mechanics, and it has not um, is not qualitatively different from other chaotic systems. It's not not very special to black hole, but the special thing is the relation to geometry. So uh, basically, um, so the recent uh, um, um, very important breakthrough is um, this uh, pair of works in last year, Jeff Pennington and uh, the other work uh, by Amhari, um, Ingohar, Marov, and Max Field. The, um, they show that these two parallel works show that the page curve has a geometrical interpretation. So basically, the short statement is that um, just like in Hawking's case, you can just do a geometrical calculation to show that uh, that there is a I mean, just similar to like Hawking's Hawking radiation calculation. It's something you can study in the geometry and then you get this uh, kind of page curve, uh, given the, the only difference from Hawking's case is that you take into account of the, the back reaction and you you, um, uh, you use this generalization of this uh, Rutaganagi formula. And and the general, so this uh, Rutaganagi formula has been studied a lot in, um, has been, uh, was proposed in um, the ADS CFT and uh, and then um, um, so there is this uh, this correction uh, of the um, of the uh, bulk entropy. So in the case of ADS-CFT, what it means is that you look at a, a boundary region A, as I draw here, and then the entropy, the leading order term, is given by an extremal surface divided by the the unit of D Newton, and the extremal surface is defined as you start with A and then you deform it into the bulk and then find the minimal area uh, geodesic. And then if you include time direction, it's a set of point rather than minimum. And then there is a subleading correction, which is there is a regime, there is a spatial regime between uh, the boundary A and the, the, uh, the geodesic gamma A, so the minimal surface gamma A. So, uh, so, when you, so the regime between them, if there is a bulk quantum field, it gives you a subleading correction, which is order to Newton to the zero. And, and that uh, that entropy uh, uh, will also contribute to the entropy of the boundary region A. For example, if you have an additional qubit that's entangled between sigma A and the complement, that will give you a contribution of the entropy of log two uh, for the boundary region A. And then, so so the new the new thing is that this uh, this formula uh, can can correctly give you a page curve by noticing that this uh, extremal surface formula this uh, quantum extremal surface um, has a, a topology change uh, when you look at the black hole at later and later time. <laughs> um, which means that uh, at the early time, the, the entropy of the boundary, um, the entropy of the uh, Hawking radiation is, uh, is, is given by an extremal surface that's outside the black hole. And then in later time, the, the extremal surface um, includes another part, which is called an entanglement island, and that's uh, most of the black hole interior. Uh, so I won't go to more details of, the, of this uh, special example. We will come back to this when we discuss the examples. But this is the, the motivation that suggests that the geometry actually knows much more than, uh, than, we, than, than we thought. Um, and then that motivates us to think about this general question. So, so let's start from, um, start from the quantum field theory entropy and then think about what's the natural generalization to system with gravity. Um, so the, the, in the quantum field theory, um, we know, so the way we calculate entropy is to do this replica trick. So we don't know how to do direct, how to directly calculate von Neumann uh, entropy. So we, we look at the, the Rini entropy as n and then take n goes to one. And the Rini entropy, we just need to calculate the trace of rho to the n for a given region. So if we think about this in quantum field theory, we can consider um, a path integral that uh, prepares that space. So, so, so this picture here is showing a path integral, maybe it's Euclidean, or maybe it's Euclidean uh, partially and, and it's partially Lorentzian. And so, so you prepare a state, and then um, there's the region A in that state. And now you need to take n copies of it, and then, uh, and then glue them with the bra, so there is the space phi A, and there is space phi A. Sorry, the, the phi A is labeled the, uh, the, 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 the value of field here, it's like the coherent state. Um, so yeah, so this picture in the middle is supposed to mean the, the reduced density matrix of A, it means you, you take the, the state psi, and then you take the bra, 
and then you trace over the complement. So you get the density operator of psi, uh, sorry, you get the density operator of A, um, which is like a, a, a functional of this uh, pair of, uh, <coughs> of field variables. And then when you take uh, the trace of row, row to the n, you need to take this picture and then take uh, n copies of it. And then you glue them with a branch, co branch covering. It means you take n copies of this, uh, this uh, manifold with an opening at the blue region. Uh, and then you uh, you glue them back, and then now you get something like this branch covered manifold M n. So you have n copies of the original manifold, um, just with the same metric. And then you but but you glue them here along A, uh, along this uh, branch color line. So so when you go around, like let's say if when n equals to two, which I draw here, you have two copies of the manifold. So when you go around uh, this point once, you go around the boundary of A. You go around once, you go to the other copy, and then you go around, go around again, you get back to the same copy. So, so just like this is like a, uh, if this is a two dimensional surface, then this is like a Riemann surface uh, with multiple sheets. Um, and, and then you use this to calculate um, the, you, you just evaluate the path integral on this manifold, and that gives you this, um, uh, this trace row to the end uh, after you do the normalization. So yeah, so 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 this d of m and a is the Cartesian function of this uh, this branch cover manifold, and then d the denominator is just the one without branch covering, which is just n um, an n power of the original manifold Cartesian function. Um, so um, okay, so this is how we do calculations in quantum field theory. In principle, we can do this for any curved space as long as the geometry is fixed. Um, any question? Yeah, um, just feel free to interrupt me anytime during the, the, the talk. And, and if you, I, I don't think I can see the chat, so please don't send the question in the chat. Uh, so uh, I had a question. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you comment about the uniqueness of n equals one, meaning uh, when is uh, Carlson theorem valid or uh, when does it get invalid? Um, sorry, uh, the uniqueness of what? Of the n goes one limit? Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, meaning that uh, when does this uh, replica trick break down, or how does it break down near n equals one for some cases? Uh, I think that that's probably some statement about the eigenvalue spectrum of row A. And for most of the cases, it, 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 it's applicable. Uh, but I, but it's, it's true that there are cases when it breaks open down. I don't know the general um, rule about that. But so I know an example, like when we study the SYP model, um, there is a case when this broke down and, and, and um, Uh, okay. Uh, that's, because, that's because the in that case it's um, um, it's like all the higher ranges are proportional to n. So so if I use this formula, I will get n over n minus one, and that diverges. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's the general rule, but I think it's um, it's, it's about uh, the concentration of the eigenvalues. Like the SVG model has a lot of low energy states, which is not true in most of physical systems. Um, and so for most of physical, like the quantum field theory case, when you don't have a zero temperature entropy, um, it seems like we are probably okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. But that's a good point. Yeah, it's, it's true that sometimes it breaks down. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is an illustration of that uh, of that branch cover manifold. So if you go around the red circle, um, it's actually two circles like this, like this drawn in the middle. Okay. So you see, you can see my mouse, right? You can see my uh, pointer. Uh, yes, we can see your pointer. Okay, thanks. So yeah. So in the middle picture is like a is like a cut. 
along the red line. So when you go around once, you go to the other copy, and then you go go back to the same copy. Um, and then, so, so so that's like a conical defect, just like the cone I draw on the right side, except that the angle around this point is bigger than 2 pi rather than smaller than 2 pi. So, so it's like a conical defect uh, with the, like the, the, the cone we draw here, it has an angle that's smaller than 2 pi when you go around the tip. Here is like 2 n pi, so it's, uh, it has a, a conical angle that's, um, that's bigger. Um, but, um, but it's for a, it's just like a cone, it has a curvature there. So, so, so this uh, branch covered manifold is like the same as the original manifold in terms of curvature everywhere, except uh, that at, the, at this branch covering point, which is the boundary of A, um, there, is a cur there is a curvature. So you can, so, so in that sense, like this trace of rho to the n, you can really view it as like a, a correlation function where you inserted this, uh, this branch cover, this test operator um, into, at the boundary of A, and then you're calculating the expectation value. Okay, so the question for us is, uh, how do you generalize all these things um, to systems where geometry is fluctuating? So, I mean, we're not, uh, uh, we not so ambitious to try to do this for like non-perturbatively for geometries that are strongly uh, fluctuating. It, so it's like we want to include, uh, uh, we want to go part integral with different geometries and then, and then develop some formula that works when at least the part integrals are determined by, uh, are, are dominant by set of points and small fluctuations around them. So, um, so, so, but then even in this re region, um, there is already some problem. So uh, when you look naively, what you, we would do, what you want to do is instead of having a fixed geometry, you just integrate over geometry and you give it an action like an Einstein Hilbert action. Um, the problem is uh, there is some ambiguity in what action you choose. Um, like if I think about this kind of closed universe case, like here, um, it's more clear. So if you think about this kind of case where the geometry has no boundary, then um, once you allow the geometry to fluctuate, you have to allow the topology to change. So once you allow the topology to change, if you just put in an Einstein Hilbert action in both the denominator, denominator and numerator, then what's the difference between them? So, I mean, you can't forbid that kind of branch covering which changes topology. So, so, um, so, so in general, the, the denominator and numerator just look the same. I mean, when you have a spatial boundary that, or time boundary, um, that may not be the case, but just this, uh, this illustrates uh, the problem. So once you allow the geometry to fluctuate, it's more than trivial to, to like put in a twist operator because the twist operator is just, uh, um, is just uh, going from one manifold to another. Right? So, um, so if you're integrating over manifolds, how do you know which one you have? Uh, and, uh, and, and they also like, um, uh, also if you, you expect the, like when you, you say, say without fluctuation, you have this kind of cone. And when you, if you allow a, a geometry to fluctuate, the side of point will not look like this because it doesn't satisfy the Einstein Hilbert, um, it doesn't satisfy the Einstein equation. So the cone, the, the conical uh, singularity will be resolved. And that will lead to some, some different behavior of the entropy. And uh, which means we are, we are talking about a different quantity even, even in this Newton go to zero limit. Can I ask something? Mm -hmm. So you are, you are here plotting everything in one, one spatial dimension. Uh, is it also valid for higher dimension? Yeah, yeah, I'm just using the 2D as an example. Yeah, this, this is supposed to be general dimension. Because it looks like in higher dimension, the twist is not local, right? That's correct, yes, yes. Uh, it's a that, tool surface. That's fine. It's fine, no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. yeah. So, so I should clarify. Yeah, everything, the, all the discussion here are all about general dimension. And and the, in general, the the twist Thanks. depending at the co-dimension two surface, which is the boundary of spatial region A. And, and we, we want some quantity that reduces to the entropy of the quantum field theory in the limit when G Newton goes to zero. Um, well, sorry, in the, in the limit when, um, at least, at least the, so when G Newton goes to zero, um, it's, it's given by quantum field theory entropy of some, some of the manifolds. Um, uh, so, so, 
so so we need to um, yeah so basically we need to um, we need to what we need to do is to allow the geometry to fluctuate but still remember that twist operator. So our proposal is. Uh, uh, excuse me, can that, I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess I guess Aaron has just answered it in the chat. Never mind. Thanks. It's okay. about how why does the conical defect vanish in the presence of uh, gravity? So. Yeah, it's because it doesn't because it, it has a singularity. It has a Dirac function in curvature, so it doesn't mm -hmm. satisfy the Einstein equation. And and that's exactly right. what we want to resolve. We I mean, the short the 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 shortest statement is that we actually want that conical singularity just to reproduce the mm -hmm. conical theory results. So as a consequence, we add, we had to add in a brain source term. We had to mm -hmm. add in a source term, uh, a brain that's called dimension two, and and state that the bound at that boundary of A, and uh, just to mm -hmm. allow that uh, conical singularity to, to happen. Um, if we don't do that, then um, then then everything will be smooth. Right. Thanks. Sorry, Sherlock. Yeah. Can I still ask a question? Yeah. So it's maybe naive, but uh, I was wondering, just in two dimensions, uh, if we just take a computation in the CFT and we couple it to gravity, that would be like just coupling your CFT to Liouville, or you just uh, have- So you're talking about a two-dimensional bulk. Yeah, uh, well, the like bulk, I really mean uh, just a QFT, CFT computation, so- mm -hmm. So, so CFT yeah. plus Liouville, and then we would, right. uh, what would be the, like, is it, is it kind of well behaved there or there's still this problems like somehow, I would naively think that this is just the computation of 2D quantum gravity, like people used to do back in the days. In a sense yeah, that- so, so there, I think you will meet the same problem. And that's like, a, that's like this, this picture. So, so the problem is that, um, well, when you say Liouville, it's like a, when you are thinking of uh, um, the same topology, I guess. I mean, the, the problem will happen uh, because you have different topology. So, so, so like, like when you write that, if you allow the geometry to fluctuate, then this pass integral over G will contain different topology. Mm -hmm. But once you do that, then the, top, the numerator and denominator are the same. Yes. Because uh, I mean, uh, if if I just naively add the Einstein Hilbert action, then they are the same. Um, we need to have some way to specify um, that boundary of A, and then um, and basically we need to insert that brain there so that the top and bottom, the numerator and denominator are different. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So in the two D case, yeah, you need to insert this uh, this twist operators. So in the case, I, without, gravity, without gravity, you just say insert the operator there. But with gravity, you need to be more careful you in, in, in the location, you know, in one way. And then you, you need to tell me you are putting in something with certain energy such that it introduced that uh, control angle. Can I ask something? So I would expect that um, even though if you have a, a gravity action, if you just compute, for example, uh, the correlator of two twist field in a certain specific position, this wouldn't cancel the, the upper and the lower part. Is it correct? Because, because I uh, would expect that uh, in order to have a kind of a equivalent of a gravity action in terms of twist field, you should integrate over the position of the twist field everywhere somehow. Uh, because you need to, to allow the geometry to fluctuate everywhere, not only at the end of your interval. Um, yeah, so this is one, this, this, this is one uh, question um, about the definition. And uh, um, it seems like uh, if we want this uh, to, so, so basically what our proposal is, we don't allow the twist field position to fluctuate everywhere, but we fix it in a gauge environment way. And, and there's not, and there's different ways to do that. For example, if you have a boundary, um, then, then you can determine the location by shooting in some light rays from the boundary and determine the location by the intersection of the light rays. Or you could, um, um, or, or, or if it's uh, close to the universe, um, at least uh, I want to fix something like the distance between the two. For example, in let's say in 2D, then when you have an interval, then you want to fix the size of that interval. Otherwise, you are averaging over many things that are phys physically different in the confused theory case. 
Okay, thanks. So yeah, so you have to, it, it has to be gauge environment, but that doesn't mean you have to integrate over all possible locations. And that, but the problem I was saying here is before that, is, is saying like, like, okay, before we think about whether the locations of the test field are, are fluctuating, uh, if we have a way to fix it at some location in a gauge environment way, then um, we still need to make sure we are using the right uh, action. And then the action here we are proposing to use is there are two ways to say it. One way is to say you're using the Einstein Hilbert action of the manifold without the branch covering. But that's equivalent to say that we have this branch covered uh, manifold and we use this Einstein Hilbert action, which is the SEH of CQs. That's the one, the manifold with branch covering. But then we add this extra term, and the extra term basically cancels that conical uh, curvature, that curvature at the conical um, singularity. So, so the total, the, 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 this together, it just means that you have an Einstein Hilbert action which only cares about the curvature everywhere else. And at the at the at this uh, conical singularity, um, um, you 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 preserve that uh, that angle of two pi n. And and this this makes it clear about the difference between numerator and denominator. So so this uh, entropy this entropy will look like a expectation value of that uh, of that test field now uh, the the brain uh, source term. So um, but we want to make it. There is another um, problem, which is the, the numerator and denominator are both dependent on geometry. So when you allow the geometry to fluctuate, are they correlated? And are you integrating over the geometry like for the whole ratio or are you integrating uh, the problem, the numerator and denominator separately? And, 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 uh, and this, uh, um, this is related to all the recent discussions about replica wormholes and, um, and like whether the gravity theory is an ensemble um, so the, the thing we propose to do is we just try to get rid of that ratio. Instead, we say um, we can just introduce a, instead of n copies of the uh, n replicas for calculating Rini entropy n, we introduce n plus m copies. And then we only insert that test field in the n copy. And uh, we, we um, well, and then we take m goes to minus n um, in the end. So that will give you, so, so, so this for positive integer n and m, uh, when you take the set of point, this, gives you, this will give you that, uh, that, that twisted manifold times m copies of the untwisted manifold. So if you take m goes to minus n, you just get that, that uh, denominator. Um, and then in general, um, in, in general case, um, you, you may get a, a wormholes connecting these manifolds. So, so in general, they don't factorize. So that's why in general, this is uh, non-trivial, but we, we just get rid of that normalization problem. So we don't, uh, we only need to deal with one uh, theory with replica. And then in the end, we take some, some limit. So the, the only thing is that we need to take two steps of replica um, go to zero limits. Like M goes to minus N and then we get Rini. And if we want the phonoma, we need to take N goes to one. Um, sorry, let me close the door. So in summary, um, our proposal is designed so that the set of point, so that, so that this, this branch cover manifold I draw on the left side um, for n equals two, that manifold with the two conical uh, points, in general is a co-dimension two surface uh, at the red point. The, the, the action is designed such that this one, this one is always the saddle point. So like if M itself satisfies the Einstein equation, then this twisted manifold also satisfies the Einstein equation of our system because the conical singularity uh, effect is, can, is canceled. So, um, uh, okay, so instead of, instead of the right side picture where everything is smooth, we want the one on the left. Uh, and, 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 but that doesn't mean this one is the dominant set of points. So the, the, the whole point is that there can be uh, other set of points, which we will discuss later. Um, but so the, um, before that, I would like to comment a little more about this, uh, this issue of gauge environment. So when the geometry is dynamical, uh, we have to determine the location of this boundary of A, where you put this uh, brain. We have to determine that location in a gauge environment way. And, and I don't see a, a unique way to do that. 
there is there is different ways to do it. For example, if you have ADS, or you, or even when you have a flat space, um, you could uh, when you have a symptotic boundary, you could determine the location by by this uh, light ray. Like you could you can send in a family of light rays and you count them from the boundary and you say when the intersection of the first incoming light ray and the tenth outgoing light ray, um, that's that's the location of my uh, manifold. So, um, so, so, so you could also uh, you could also think of more physical ways, like like how do we determine location in our universe? I mean, we could we could uh, have markers, right? We could we could have massive matters which are sitting somewhere, just like star, stars, and then we use them as the markers and say, uh, I want I want uh, my boundary to sit um, in the tenth um, um, marker on my map. And then, at a certain time, determined by some light rate. So, so, so you you could uh, you and and there is a another case which is like if I have, say, for example, my geometry is a sphere, and and spatially, and there's no way to determine where is the location. They are equivalent, but at least I could fix the size of this region. And I could say my my space space is a sphere, and then I uh, my 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 region A is a hat, and then I can fix. This to be a, a head with certain size, so you 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 allow the the head to go different places, um, but at least the size should be fixed. Yeah, so so these are examples of different ways um, to fix the location, and uh, they they should all return to the same quantity in when the geometry is static, um, but when the geometry is um, is is fluctuating, they they could be different things. Um, okay, so, but the discussion applies to, to any of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for the interruption. I just had a last question. Uh, so when we are integrating over all uh, replicas which have dynamical gravity, why do we assume that Einstein equation is valid? Because uh, uh, is it in the semi-classical approximation where we are doing the path integral over the replica manifold? Uh, where we assume Einstein equation to be valid and uh, everywhere the geometry is smooth, and even though it's dynamical, so that uh, we need to remove the twist fields at the boundary. Uh, meaning, uh, why is it that uh, we're assuming Einstein equation's validity in the path integral of uh, of all manifolds? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, I was a little distracted because my son just ran in. Um, <laughs> In the room, so um, so so um, you were you were asking why are, are you asking why the the path integral without the branch branch uh, without the brain works? So uh, I'm if it's uh, going out of time, I can discuss it later. So it's up to you, sir. Um, well. No, it, either way is okay with me. I, no, I was just sorry. I just didn't capture the question because uh, my son was in the room and then he just left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. I was uh, asking, sir, that uh, why do we assume the validity of Einstein equation in the uh, in the path integral? Is it because we are assuming some kind of some kind of saddle point approximation of the path integral where uh, Einstein equation is valid? Yeah, so we are, yeah, well, in general, we are integrating over all geometry. So it's not, um, um, it, it, so certainly we're not, we're not only looking at the, the, the geometry satisfying as an equation. Um, what I'm saying is we hope that what we propose will reduce to the quantum field theory entropy um, in the limit when G Newton goes to zero. So, so um, uh, I mean, that's uh, when, when there's no non-trivial things like the, the entanglement island. Uh, <clears throat> Then, then it should reduce to the um, to the formula for quantum field theory, and, and and that's why I'm 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 talking about the um, the saddle points, which are the ones that are dominant in the limit when G Newton goes to zero. So these are the ones the classical solution satisfies the Einstein equation, and we need to be careful about this uh, um, about this branch covering branching surface. Oh, uh, so. Uh... Maybe I could put it in the end after the talk. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so, so as I 
said, um, yeah, we, we want to allow the geometry to fluctuate, but we always are interested in the region where the theory is semi classical which means the genome plane is small, and we are looking at set of points and fluctuation around set of points. To the leading order, in the end, we are just doing looking at the leading leading uh, term. And uh, and if we look at the the alias CFT case, it's the same order um, there. Um, you only need to look at the set of point, and that already gives you that uh, that quantum extremal surface formula. <clears throat> Okay, so so the non-trivial case is is like here, it's like um, when we look at the branch covering manifold, uh, when we look at the sorry, when we look at the saddle point of this uh, of this replica action, then the trivial um, case is the solution is just the branch cover manifold of the original manifold M, and and that's always a saddle point by design, but then mean, uh, but the non-trivial case is when that's not the dominant saddle point. You may have another saddle point with different topology, just like uh, the picture on the right side, and that could um, uh, become more dominant. And, and in that case, um, we get these, uh, these replica one poles, and, uh, and, and we get a, a formula of the entropy that has a non trivial uh, quantum extremal surface. So that's, that's the case when, when we say there is an a entanglement island. So, so, that the, so, so the, the statement is that even if you look at the saddle point, even at the level of saddle point of the action, there, there is an entropy possibility, which in which case the entropy of this system with a weak uh, fluctuating gravity is, is qualitatively different from the entropy of the quantum field theory in the fixed background. So, because once you allow the geometry to fluctuate, it could change the topology um, like the picture here. Um, so yeah, so 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 then, then um, in general, I mean, if the top of, if the geometry is very general and doesn't preserve this replica symmetry, then we don't know how to do calculation. But if the geometry has the ZN replica symmetry, which means um, um, the there's n copies of different. Um, the, I mean, the, the manifold has has a symmetry when you do the cyclic permutation between the different replicas. Then it could be simplified in the same way as ADS CFT given by this paper. You basically take that manifold and do a ZN, ZN quotient. And the ZN quotient is like just, just uh, going back to the original manifold. If you, if you do that to the, to the case here, to the branch cover manifold, you just get back the original manifold. You just do the end to end mapping. Right? You map um, all every, um, like the end, end for the Riemann sheet back to the CPO fold. Um, but when you have a different geometry, when you have a different topology, then that's different. So the, the neighborhood around this, uh, this branch covering point will be mapped back to the original manifold. But there is some other, uh, if there is some other connection between these different parts, different um, um, replica sectors, then, then that connection uh, will, be, will become a special surface, which is this I. And, and at the boundary of that I, there will be conical angles. So basically, because the quotient will map this uh, conical uh, singularities with angle two and pi to two pi, but but the, but the the extra region i there is no brain there. Like my boundary condition uh, is not a boundary condition, but it's like yeah, my my uh, my the brain we inserted is making sure that there is this two and pi angle at the red point at the boundary of a. So when you do the quotient, that part becomes smooth. But the smooth part, which is the extra connection, the smooth part becomes uh, having a conical angle, which is two pi over n. And that's, that's exactly um, the same as in the ADS CFT case, where the analog of A is like the boundary, and the analog of the I is like uh, the, the bulk, like the entanglement wedge of A. And then the red dot on the right side, which the, with the new conical angles you get by quotient, uh, with angle two pi over n, these are like the the Ritaka Nagi surface. So so that's why like when you calculate the entropy, you get a contribution from there, which is the area law term, that's the area of i, but you don't get an area law from the boundary of a. So so that, that that's that's a key that's an important difference. Like when you are calculating the entropy of this region a, you get the you get the quantum field theory entropy of this form, which is the quantum field theory entropy of a and i together. And in general, they are not factorized, uh, and so the entropy must be the union of A and I. Um, 
but in addition, you get an area law term which only counts the area of the I, not A. And that's because this uh, this conical uh, angles you add in. So 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 basically, if you don't add this con, so another way to say this is if you don't add this uh, this conical angle in our action, but we still do the same kind of discussion, then we will get a formula that includes the area law of A. And um, um, and and, um, and and in that case, I don't I don't think there will be. Um, I mean, first of all, there is no way to fix um, the location of that boundary. And because of that, I think the entropy, the formula will not have an attribute <coughs> set of points. Yeah, so, the, so, so this is basically a derivation of this uh, quantum extremal surface formula, which was, uh, so in the, in the proposals of the page curve last year, this was done in ADS CFT coupled to a bus. So we can just directly use this formula in ADS CFT. So here we're just showing that in general geometry, even if you don't have any region without gravity, you can still use this formula um, in the limit when Singleton is small. Um, any questions? Um, yeah, so, okay, so now, so let me discuss a little bit about the physical interpretation. Um, so when the geometry is uh, dynamical, then, um, then we can't say, okay, you just have a density operator rho a, and then you're calculating trace of rho a to the power n uh, and take a log. So, so we can't even say that. So what are we calculating? I mean, the, the point is that um, this is still um, a well-defined physical quantity because you can view Rainy entropies as some particular measure of correlation function. So let's, uh, let's not talk about uh, von Neumann, but the Rainy entropy you can always view as a particular kind of uh, average of correlation function. For example, the, um, um, the second Rainy is like an average of squares of the one point function, uh, where you take an operator that's arbitrary in that region, and you take an autonomous basis of, the, of it. For example, if uh, like the discrete analog in, in the spin chain language will be like, like all the possible poly operators and products over them. Um, so when you when you take a, a, a average over these one point functions, you get this e to the minus s a square uh, e to the minus s a two, and you can also see and there is a generalization to the general n three entropy. You can also see that uh, from this formula why this uh, form, this quantity is u v cut off dependent. Like when we calculate the uh, entropy of a, of a quantum field theory, like uh, for example, 2D CFT, it's always dependent on the UV cutoff. Uh, it diverges in UV. And, and the same is the, true for the right side. Right? When you take a sum over all the one point functions, <coughs> you need a cutoff. And, and um, um, if you take the cutoff to be higher and higher, the quantity goes, um, the quantity uh, changes. Um, so, so, um, so, 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 I mean, someone, some people are interested in having a UV complete formula for entropy in gravity theory. So they may view this as a, as a problem. Um, but from our purpose, I think this is a good thing. Like, a, like our formula um, depends on the UV cutoff in the same way as, uh, as the uh, quantum field theory calculation. And the, it's the UV, it's the, the part that's different from quantum field theory that's given by the island formula. That's the, um, uh, that's the UV uh, insensitive. So yeah, okay. So that's the discussion here. Um, and and, uh, and one, but one important point is that the UV cutoff at the island, at the island I, that doesn't appear. So 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 let's say I have a spatial manifold. This is a picture for the spatial manifold, and then I have a region. Uh, I have a region A, and then I'm trying to calculate this entropy. So it will depend on the UV cutoff because there is more and more EPR pairs at shorter scales uh, at the boundary of A. I need to cut off, and then, um, but but then, um, if you think about if you do this calculation and you find an non-trivial extremal surface, which is the boundary of I, so the entropy, the actual entropy becomes the entropy of A I together in the quantum field theory plus the area of I, and that quantity actually is independent from the UV cutoff at I. Because um, when we change the UV cutoff at I, we have to at the same time change the G Newton. Um, so, so um, we have a similar discussion in ADS CFT. So when you when you have a um, 
when you think about, say, reducing the UV cutoff, you're integrating over some quantum field theory degrees of freedom. You should put in, I mean, the, the integrating all of these quantum field theory degrees of freedom will renormalize the Newton. And that means that some of the entropy that used to be in this uh, SQFT will go to the area law of, part of, of, of the boundary of I. And the sums will stay the same. So in other words, if you think about the UV cutoff that's dependent in space, and you only change it around I, you don't change it at the neighborhood of A, then the entropy of A should stay the same. So that's, that's, that makes sense because physically we are only, we are, when, we are, uh, when we calculate the entropy, I don't need to tell you where is I, I only need to tell you where is A. Um, any question? Uh, so I had a small comment regarding this formula. Uh, uh, this formula seems to be coming from uh, the semi-classical replica trick, meaning we are applying replica trick over uh, uh, manifold uh, where semi-classical geometry is valid and using quantum extremal surface prescription. Uh, but uh, isn't island in a region of strong gravity regime where we need to justify why this uh, formula is valid? Because uh, uh, island in the original proposal of the East Coast model was in the interior of black hole, which I think is a region of strong gravity. So uh, yeah. we need to justify why this is still a valid formula because uh, we don't know if uh, this description of quantum extremal surface formula is valid for strong gravitational regions. Well, I think the point is that, um, yeah, it's in strong gravity region and um, um, you could say, well, I could say that the existence of the island itself is showing, is, is, is considered, you can view that as evidence that gravity is strong, which means that the back reaction gives you this, uh, this new side point that's dominant. And so that's a, that's that's you can say that's because that's because gravity is strong. Otherwise, you will always get the trivial saddle point. Um, but but that's okay for us. And the, the only um, uh, because the geometry is still classical there. I mean, so, uh, like we're not in a region that's like extremely close to singularity where we need to worry about quantum fluctuation of, of geometry. So, uh, so so even even when you have the island in the interior, that part is supposed to be uh, where the 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 the, the, the um, um, the side point of the um, action is still dominant. Uh, yeah, so, so in other words, it's strong in the sense of different from having no gravity, but um, but it's not that the quantum fluctuation is strong. Uh, but uh, as the island, meaning as the Euclidean time evolves, the island also tends to uh, okay, I need to revise it, but uh, doesn't the island at some time is close to the uh, singularity of the black hole? Um, at least not generally, not, not, not in general. I mean, it will, it will go up, um, but uh, not faster than your physical region. Uh, by physical region, you mean? Uh... So, 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 okay. So, um, um, we can jump uh, ahead a little bit to this picture. So, so you see like, a, like yeah, we, we calculate this in some example of black holes. Then your boundary region is like the A. This is a picture of a flat space black hole. Um, then, then you have a boundary region A. And then you have this island I. And if you look at the infalling coordinates, the island I is behind the region A. Yeah. So, like, so at least in these examples, it's not meeting the similarity before I take this this uh, boundary region of A. The time goes to infinity. I mean, I'm not sure if in general that's true, and it, it may be possible to design some case where uh, where you get close to the singularity. Um, but uh, and in that case, I would say then we need to worry about whether the calculation is valid. But uh, but in general, we don't need. I mean, the point is that. Um, we propose this uh, this formula. We should we should apply it to the case when the island doesn't go too close to the singularity. Uh, how do we know that uh, inside the black hole interior, 
where gravity is strong or weak? Well, it, well, so, I mean, the, the criteria is with G Newton, right? So, so you, you want action that's much bigger than G Newton. Um, okay. Uh, so, so, so at least, the, I mean, like, for example, the distance in general, you do the solution, you find the island and the distance to the singularity are all other one, other or um, finite, and then G Newton goes to zero, then you should be safe. Uh, okay, uh, thank you, sir. Because because if you do any fluctuation, of, it's like yeah, just in one word, you is like one way to power. So so it, it plays the role of uh, it, um. So if you if you keep everything else finite in the action, then it's uh, th then the quantum fluctuations are surprised. Okay. But okay. Um, um, well, how? How long does yeah. the seminar usually last? Um, usually it's uh, around one hour, but we start okay. like five minutes late and there are um, um, some questions uh, in between maybe. We could still have- Yeah, I, I, I also have to go um, around uh, 9.15 or, or so. So yeah, so yeah, I, I plan to take another maybe um, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. Thanks. Yeah, so I, I won't talk much about the second part, uh, the, the, but, but uh, I want to discuss these, uh, these examples. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so the first example is, uh, is the black hole geometry. So, um, so previously there was works about, um, about like ADS black holes, and then you add in a bus, and the bus is, is, a geom is a system without a geometry. So in that case, you can just build this as an application of ADS CFT. And in our case, now we have this formula, we can apply it to a system uh, with gravity everywhere. So we don't need to artificially like turn off the gravity in the bus. So we consider a flat space geometry, a flat space cruise called um, black hole. So, so it's just, because it's easier to calculate, it's easier than a wide geometry. So we just consider this eternal black hole, um, the maximally extended. Um, but uh, there is one subtlety, which is uh, you, you don't want to just take that eternal black hole and say, I'm doing a path integral on that, because that, that means your, your outside, your exterior will have a finite, will have a constant temperature. Because if you do an attenuation to imaginary time, you get a time translation invariance, and then you look at the period you know it has a temperature. But that's not consistent because we want to look at a quantum field theory in that background. And if you have a finite temperature, you have a finite energy density, and you have an infinite space that's different from ADS. You have an infinite space, so, so, so that's going to give you a big back reaction. Um, so, so instead of that, we consider the same geometry, but then uh, we consider a different state. So basically, the the logic is is that we consider only the S wave mode. So so it's described by like a two D CFT. And once we go to two D CFT, we could do some well transformation. And the well transformation um, will bring you from one state to the other state to some other states. Well, it change your energy momentum tensor in some way. So so you could do the well transformation basically to, to cool down the exterior. So you get something like this picture here. So this is what what we numerically show. So you, you can do some well transformation and define a state, which is like basically zero energy density everywhere in the blue, in the bluish region. And there is some, some energy uh, current in the yellow and, and deep blue region. So, so outside that, that, uh, that line, the light-like region, then it's cold. So, so, the, so that's just to make sure it's consistent. Like, like we, were, we were taking that cruise called geometry and then we ignore the back reaction because of the quantum the field theory, because of the matter. And that's consistent here because we don't have like a big region with a finite energy density. Uh, so, once that's, uh, so once you confirm that, then this is a, I mean, this is not a very natural matter. This is, this is a kind of a very artificial state of the matter because <clears throat> you have this, uh, this uh, um, positive and negative um, energy current. Um, but that's just to keep this, uh, this eternal geometry, um, but it's a well-defined state. So when we look at the, the island in that, um, when we look, we, we can calculate the island in this geometry and we get something like this picture. Yeah, um, so, so basically 
um, so you see that the island uh, goes into the interior and then um, it's uh, it's basically the scrambling time earlier than uh, than than this uh, position of the region A, the time the time of the region A. Um, yeah, so that's that's an interesting comment that when people study these eternal black holes in ADS, then they see that the island is a little bit outside the horizon. And now here, when we, we kind of consider a more physical situation where where the geometry where the state state is not that eternal state, but the the state with some uh, uh, with some zero zero um, energy in in asymptotically in infinity, and and that somehow push the island back to the interior, just like the the um, just like the the black hole form in form with matter. Um, the other example we considered is a two dimensional case where things are simplified. So so when in 2D, we can consider a, a ADS path integral, which gives you a state on the boundary, on the spatial boundary. This is not like an ADS CFT. This is like a Euclidean path integral, which gives you a, a, which gives you a CFT state on the entire circle. Um, so yeah, so it's, you can, so it's like an ADS CFT, but in ADS CFT case, the, the, the circle here drawn will be like the space time of the boundary. Here we are saying that's the space of the boundary. And then, in, uh, then there's a JT gravity. So, so in that case, uh, we don't have other way to fix the, bound, the region. So we fix it to be um, a region with a finite size. So, so we calculate the entropy of a uh, interval with a finite size. And then uh, then, then when, you, when you have, sorry. Then when you have multiple replica, um, what happened is you could have, um, so, so if you don't have the sort of trivial, the trivial geometry is like um, you just have multiple copies of the original system and then you glue them. So that's the band covered manifold. And then trivial geometry is basically like you glue these disks um, not only at the red region but in another region. And then you get this non-trivial uh, picture here where there's there is the other glue region I. Yeah. So, so topologically, it's like the picture I draw earlier, except it's disks, not a um, not circles, and then uh, and then you, you get this kind of page curves. So basically, um, this is because your matter is a CFT. So there's correlation functions that are that there's entropy that's beyond the area law. So so actually, in all these examples we know, including the first one we show here, it's it's essential to have entropy in the quantum field theory that's beyond area law. Otherwise, I mean, otherwise both term looks like area law. So you're not you're not going to gain anything by having an island because you just cost some more area law entropy. So the, the reason why sometimes you have non-trivial um, this uh, mm -hmm. uh, extremal surface is that by including the island I, you cost the area law of I, but you gain uh, some, you gain uh, some reduce, some reduction of entropy because the entanglement, because the entropy of A and I together um, is smaller. And so, 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 so here, here we are looking at the non-trivial formula with a non-trivial island, and the trivial formula, which is um, the, just the entropy of A in QFT. So to have this left side smaller than the right side, you what you really need is you have a lot of quantum entanglement between A and I, which is which is such that the entropy reduced by more than the area law. Yeah. So this is uh, um, th this is why like all the examples involve CFTs in one plus one. Um, okay. Yeah, so I think that um, I will skip the, I will just briefly mention the, the random tensor networks, but skip the, the details. So, 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 so far, so far all, um, all these are gravitational calculations. And then we were hoping to get some more intuition about why these, um, um, like, like what, what, what is the physical meaning of this entanglement island and how to construct operators from it. Uh, so, Jolan? Yeah. Uh, it would be really nice if you wouldn't mind going over the tensor network uh, picture because uh, that is what I was really, you know. Um, yeah, curious. unfortunately, you know. I have to I have to send my son to school, so You're right, right, right. To, okay. I may have to okay. go in, in like a, another um, five to ten minutes. But yeah, yeah I, I certainly I'm happy to briefly mention. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, so I so I won't be able to define them, but uh, basically, yeah, we can. Um, so tensor networks is like a Feynman diagram, and that gives you gives you a, a many-body state. 
So you contract the tensors and give you a state. And then what we shown in 2016 is that if you have random tensors, then the state satisfies the Ritalinati formula. And you can also get the generalization Ritalinati formula uh, by, by sending in some general quantum field theory state, which is the big box here. So the general picture in holography case is you have a bulk state. And then that's mapped by the tensor network to a bigger space on the boundary. And that, that gives you that, that gives you um, Ritalinati surface, which means when you calculate the entropy of a boundary region, you get the contribution from the horizontal lines, that's the area law, and contribution from the vertical line, which is the quantum field theory entropy. And then we want to generalize this to, um, to, to the more generic case to beyond ADS CFT. And the tensor network model, when you the definition naturally generalized to beyond. Uh, ADS CFT, you can just you can have a small boundary or you can have no boundary, and and then uh, you can still define the tensor network. Right, you can have a quantum field theory state and then project by these tensors, and then nothing left. Right? that's like an example of a bound, uh, universe without boundary. Um, so that definition is okay, but uh, but uh, how because you like for example in the case without boundary, you don't even have any state left. So what are we, I mean, what, what, what is this critical system? What is the Hilbert space? It's not, it's all not clear. Um, so the, the point is that, the point we want to make is that, yeah, you don't have this uh, boundary Hilbert space, but uh, you can still define correlation function. Um, so you can just take the tensor network and you insert correlators. For example, when you have a boundary, you could put boundary correlation, you could, you could have bulk correlations by inserting operators here. And if you don't have boundary, you only have the bulk one. Um, so the problem is that because there is this tensors, so so physically this is like a, a, a post-select economy kind. It's like you have the quantum field theory, which is the ordinary state rho b, and then instead of just taking a trace over rho b, you project on this tensor network state. So because of the projection, it's different applying an operator on the left of rho b and on the right. So you have to keep track of the correlation functions when you have both both sides. You have you have you have to apply the operator on the left side or the right uh, on the right side, and you keep a, keep track of the pair of operators. And and this uh, this is why we use uh, this super density operator framework, which was from a, a paper I I co-authored co two years ago. Um, so so basically, you you introduce this. Uh, uh, pair of operators and you view them as two states. You view the label, the operator label as state. And then that defines the density operator, but with a higher dimension. Like if it's a single qubit, if this horizontal, if this vertical line is a single qubit, then this is like four dimensional because there is four operators orthogonal to each other. And so then, then you get a four by four density operator. And physically that's really just meaning, that's really physically that's just opening that line. So it's saying like, although the closed the universe tensor network looks like just defining a number, but if you allow me to insert operators, you have to allow me to break the line. And once you break the line, it defines the state. But it's different from the ordinary quantum field theory because, because the Hilbert space will depend on where you probe. You have to tell me where you probe. Then I open these lines and then that defines the quantum state. And then you can talk about entropy. So, so the point is that the analog of, our, of the entropy we propose is, is the entropy of this A2. So say I'm interested in probing this region. So I, I don't open the line anywhere else. I have this uh, region A where I open this line and define the state. I define the density operator. And the, but when I open the line, I got two. I got the A1 and A2. Sorry, uh, I said it wrong uh, earlier. So yeah, you open the line, you get A1 and A2, and then you calculate the entropy of A1. So, so it looks like you have entanglement of the region A with Another copy of A, which is in this uh, confused, in this uh, tensor network space, and that uh, the one that satisfies this uh, quantum extremal surface formula and the island, uh, it has this island phenomenon. And and physically, that's because when you when you do the calculation in large bound dimension limit, it reduces to an IT model, and then the IT model has two domains. So you're calculating the entanglement between A1 and A2. So you that corresponds to a boundary condition that spins up in A2 and down in A1, and then and then you get the IC model and you find the dominant configuration and there's spin up domain and spin down domain. So if everywhere is spin up domain, then that's the ordinary quantum field theory case. And if there is a down domain, like in the picture on the right side, then that's the island. Because that means that that entropy will be given by 
the entropy of A and I, which is the spin down region, plus the cost of the vertical of the horizontal line. So, so, so then in addition, what we learn from this uh, tensor network calculation is that um, what it means, what does it mean, like quantum in quantum information uh, of having this island? Naively, like people discuss in gravity calculations that, that the, the operator in the island could be reconstructed in A. And here we clarify that uh, it's only small perturbations in the island that can be reconstructed. It means that if I insert an operator that only touches a small number of qubits in the island, then you can show that that operator can be reconstructed to A. Like you can, for any operator here, this diamond, you can find an operator in A that does the same thing. Um, so, so, but, uh, but if you have an operator that applies to the entire island, then that could uh, just um, destroy the island. And physically, that mean, that's because um, the, the island, it's, it's like in the black hole case, like if you try to send a small probe in the island, then in principle that, that probe can be reconstructed in the radiation. But if you try to send in like millions of probes and probe everything in the island, then that just creates new, uh, that just destroys the entanglement between A and I, and, um, and, and, you, um, and that region is not in your, in your entanglement island anymore. I think I will just stop here. And um, um, yeah, so in conclusion, it's, uh, we are trying to set up a framework and then um, study the entropy, at least in the case of semi classical geometry. So, so I think there is a lot of open questions I will leave here. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Um, maybe we can take one or two questions before you leave. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so I have a question. It's about the uh, shadows in the gravity uh, uh, model. Mm -hmm. So are you saying that, um, in, uh, so I see, see it seems to me that a two shadows actually one shadow is without island and the other is with island or, right, right there are two shadows, but then how do you like distinguish these two? So it seems to me that you are now saying um, the one with island is more dominant than the one without island in this uh, set of point approximation. It depends on the entropy of the Q of T. Yeah, so you, you compare the different settles. And so the original Q of T entropy, like in the black hole example, the original Q of T entropy will be increasing in time, will be, uh, will be linearly increasing in time. And then uh, the island one, the one with the island, um, is not increasing, and you'll see that there must be, that means that in late enough time, the one with island must be dominating. But that's not generally true. In, in, you, in some cases, you certainly can have, um, uh, yeah, I mean, in most cases, probably there's no island, and it's always just a trivial side of point dominant. Okay, so your criteria is to look at the late time behavior of. Um, okay. Well, the criteria is to look at the, the formula. So the, the, the extremal surface formula, you just compare the different I, the, the different eyes. And the, I, I, the trivial I is the option. So there is a extremal surface formula and you go over all eyes. Yeah. So, so, so I could be just empty surface. I see. Where this reduces to the, uh, the naive entropy of QLT of A. I see, thanks. Does anyone else have uh, another question? Uh, so can I ask a question which I raised in chat? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so uh, uh, so the Hawking radiation in the island formula is isomorphic to the Hilbert space of island. So is it right to conclude that Hawking radiation is state dependent. Uh, in the original island formula, this, this may then add subtleties to how we compute the entanglement entropy. And uh, due to state dependence, entanglement entropy may appear a state dependent quantity and uh, as it appears to me. And uh, it may not give uh, a- Sorry, I'm confused. Entanglement entropy is always a state dependent. Right? I mean, it's, it's a property of a state. 
yeah but uh, if hawking radiation is state dependent we do not know of a procedure to compute it <coughs> like the dual qft setup um which you <coughs> sorry in which, which case are you talking about um let's say in the black hole with a, let's say a pure state black hole uh, which evaporates yeah. um then then what is the problem the, I'm assuming the AEMM model. Uh, in that case, we have a bath which contains Hawking radiation and island in the black hole interior. Mm -hmm. Island is uh, state dependent and is uh, the Hilbert space of island is isomorphic to the Hawking radiation Hilbert space. Uh, mm -hmm. Does it imply that Hawking radiation must be state dependent uh, from your viewpoint? Um, first of all, I'm not sure what the, it means that island Hilbert space is isomorphic to the Hawking radiation because um, from what we see in this, um, well, maybe a subspace is, but from what we emphasize, what, what we see here is in the tensor network case, we can see that um, like when we say that, that there is, a, let's say there may be a big region as your island, but that doesn't mean like anything there is reconstructable from the radiation. It, it means basically small perturbations there. Maybe all the states that has all the states that have a, a vanishing back reaction, um, something like that. So, so the small perturbation, like if you per, if you perturb one qubit in the island without changing anything else, then these kind of small perturbations can be reconstructed faithfully uh, from the region A, um, but not a, a general uh, multi-particle state. Um, oh, and uh, the, and about sorry. Yeah, yeah, you can continue, sir. And about the state dependence, I'm still not sure. I mean, there is a state, there is a question about whether the island operators are state dependent. Like the state dependent discussion is always about interior. Yeah, like that when you construct the interior operators from the outside, then the construction itself depends on the state of the black hole. I, I think that's true here. Uh, so doesn't the isomorphism of uh, Hilbert space of island and Hawking radiation, which tend to purify the Hawking radiation, imply that Hawking radiation should also be state dependent? Um, I, I'm not sure what that means because the Hawking radiation, uh, if you are saying, let's say I have pure state matter collapsing into a black hole, and then the Hawking radiation, if you take all of them, the state depends on that initial state, that's certainly true. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's expected from your entirety. Like if I put it in the initial state that looks the same, have the same energy density, but it's orthogonal to, to the other state, then the output state will also be orthogonal. So, so it certainly is state dependent. Uh, I, meant to, that I meant to mention state dependence in the spirit of uh, Papadimus Raju proposal. Yeah, but that's talking about that. That's always talking about state dependence of operators in the interior. Yeah. So I mean, the, the, I, the, the outside, the outside input, the, the outside output depends on outside input. That's not subverting, right? The, the subverting thing is if you construct the operators everywhere, including the interior, then there may be a difference between operators outside and the operators inside. And the operators inside may more explicitly depend on the black hole macro state. And the outside may only depend on the macro state. Uh, but what does isomorphism of Hilbert space mean in that case? I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't, I, I'm not sure which terminology you are referring to, but. Um, uh, I'm referring to the terminology of AEMM where Hawking radiation is purified by island at the cost of area term. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, but I, I don't quite understand the problem. Yeah, so. Oh. There is a, I mean, there, there is a. Yeah, there is an entanglement between island and A, which makes this isomorph, which makes this uh, reconstruction possible. But uh, is it okay? I will try to uh, mail you and ask you the question more precisely if possible. Okay. Uh, Okay. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't quite. I mean, I, maybe there's some some terminology um, that you're not using the same way. Okay, I, I yeah. probably should go now. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Sir.
Thank you very much uh, for the nice talk and uh, for being with us for this last one hour. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.